We start with the apparent collapse of Newt Gingrich in Iowa. Howard Feynman is an MSNBC political analyst and the Huffington Post Media Group editorial director. David Yepsen is a political columnist and the director of the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute at Southern Illinois University. Howard, is this the continuation of what we've discussed previously of how this wave of support moved from Bachman to Perry to Kane to Newt? And it just seems like continual discontent, or is this different? Well, I think it's dif different because it's more intense. I think Newt Gingrich, being the famous guy that he is, the controversial guy that he is, excited uh, uh, great uh, acclaim when he managed to survive the beginning of his campaign and became the, sort of the last man standing. Uh, but now he's really in it, uh, talking to our people out in Iowa. And I'm, I'm talking about John Ward, our lead reporter for HuffPost, and Todd Richardson, who's the regional editor for our Patch local sites. They're telling me, first of all, that Newt is announcing this afternoon that he's going to go on a 44 city and town bus tour for the last several days of the campaign. And I'm sure Dave Yepsen can affirm that when you head on a bus tour for 44 towns, it's not necessarily a strong sign. Uh, uh, Newt Gingrich has been pummeled, absolutely pummeled, by at least three or four million dollars worth of negative advertising from independent PACs, from Ron Paul, and so forth. And, and, and what went up in Iowa seems to be really rather dramatically going down well, big time in a hurry. David, let's look at the numbers that Howard makes reference to. Newt Gingrich's support in Iowa, and you're close to this, is on a steep downward slide. This is the latest PPP poll, and it's got Ron Paul at 23 percent, Mitt Romney 20 percent, Newt at 14 percent. But two weeks ago, it was a different story. At that time, this poll had Ron Paul at 18 percent, Mitt Romney at 16, and Newt Gingrich leading at 27 percent. Meanwhile, the real clear politics trend lines in Iowa from November 1st until today tell the story there. You've got Gingrich making a steady and steep climb until about December 11, and then his support drops off a cliff. At the start of November, Romney was in his low 20 percent comfort zone. Then he began a slide that didn't turn around until early December. Now he's back in the 20 percent range. And Ron Paul has had a fairly steady rise in the polls to the point where he's now the front runner. David Yepsen, diagnose what's going on here for Newt Gingrich. Well, there's an ebb and flow to this for all the candidates. There's a lot of uncertainty in this electorate. Even those people who have made a decision, if you push them, uh, they'll tell you, well, they might be persuaded to change their mind. Uh, in the case of Newt Gingrich, uh, I think Howard's right. I think, I think a candidate Newt was uh, doing quite well, and, and he was hit with a tsunami of, of attack ads and criticisms. And so caucus scores took a second look at him. And, you know, I think this thing with the judges that you mentioned, uh, is, it strikes a lot of caucus scores as maybe just is, is a little bit weird. Um, and, and so I think that so, some of the social conservatives are having some trouble uh, with Newt Gingrich. So it, it's, it fits a pattern what we've seen throughout this entire campaign of a candidate rises, gets hit by something, has a gaffe. And, and so Newt Gingrich has, has fallen victim to that. But it's and almost, you're right, it's he doesn't almost... have much on the ground. David, it's almost like a game of, of musical chairs. And now with 15 days to go, as they continue to remove the chairs, there aren't too many places left for those folks to go who are dissatisfied and have moved from candidate to candidate to candidate. I guess my question is, who benefits in this environment? Right now, I think Mitt Romney does, uh, because uh, as, a, as sort of the moderate candidate in the, in the race, uh, he's the odd man out. We saw this pattern happen in Iowa in 1980 when George Herbert Walker Bush won, and the conservative vote was all chopped up uh, among several other candidates, and he was able to win with a plurality. I think Romney is hoping to pull the, do that same sort of thing with the conservative vote all chopped up. Uh, we haven't mentioned the social conservatives are having a great deal of difficulty agreeing on who they're for. And also, one thing that does get overlooked, not, all, not everybody's a social conservative in the Republican Party. And even among social conservatives, jo issues like jobs and the economy uh, are what drive, is what, what's driving this. But every Republican you talk to say they like certain things about can some candidates, they don't like other things about them, and so they're having a real difficult time making up their mind. Howard Feynman, you re made reference to the, uh, the ad spending. Let's take a look at that spending in Iowa. In the first national election since the Citizens United ruling allowed unlimited campaign spending by PACs, it's clear to see the impact. In just the coming week in Iowa, here's the breakdown on TV ad spending. 
Restore Our Future, that's the pro-Romney PAC, is going to spend $713,000 in Iowa, far more than the Romney, quote, campaign will be spending, $258,000. And the Newt Gingrich campaign is going to spend $222,000 combining PAC money and campaign money, Mitt Romney outspending Newt Gingrich by our count, four to one. Well, there are a couple things going on here, and, and David, when he was covering for the Des Moines Register, knows exactly how this works. In a multi-candidate field with a long race ahead, there are complicated strategies in Iowa. For Mitt Romney, it's a bigger priority for Mitt Romney that Newt Gingrich lose than that Mitt Romney wins. If Mitt Romney wins, it's gravy. But if Newt Gingrich loses, having become the front runner nationally, uh, that is a tremendous victory for Romney, even if it's Ron Paul who ends up uh, being the ultimate winner. On the social issue conservatives, a couple things. The judge issue, from my understanding, what our reporters are saying, the judge issue, you know, arrest the judges, all the things Newt's been saying, that plays with some social conservatives. But that is a very disruptive and sort of overly dramatic way to appear... Pe to appeal to social conservatives. Newt Gingrich has to do that because he has other problems with social conservatives, given his personal biography, et cetera. And, and so he's using a, an issue that's popular in Iowa with the far right, namely dislike of judges, but it may turn off the, the moderates who do also participate, as David says, in the Republican caucuses on caucus night. David, to, to what extent do endorsements uh, hold the key to why all of a sudden now Newt is tanking and, and Mitt Romney seems to be strengthened. You know, I don't think endorsements mean very much uh, anymore. I think newspaper endorsements are a bit of a throwback to the old days. Uh, certainly the Register's endorsement, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a paper with a, a, an editorial policy on the left-hand side of the spectrum. It just doesn't have a lot of credibility with, uh, with Republicans. It does on the, on the uh, I'm sorry, on the right-hand side of the spectrum. The Register has credibility on the left-hand side of the spectrum in a Democratic uh, primary fight. Uh, but, you know, and even the only endorsements I think that count in a caucus fight are ones that either bring money or organizational support, shoe leather. So, for example, in, in a Republican caucus fight, you want to get the support of, of social conservatives because a lot of those pastors have, have networks of, of members that they work. And in a Democratic fight, you want to get uh, support from organized labor. Uh, but endorsements of individual politicians or newspapers, I don't think they make much difference. Howard, is there any prospect that Ron Paul wins in Iowa, builds on that, and puts himself on a path to capturing the GOP nomination. Well, we keep saying no. Uh, I suppose it's not impossible. I covered Ron Paul's campaign pretty closely in New Hampshire last time around, four years ago. I thought he would do better in New Hampshire than he all ended up doing in that sort of libertarian-oriented state. But if he wins Iowa and gets the validation there, then he has to be considered a chief contender in New Hampshire. And once that happens... Uh, who the heck knows? Everybody seems to say, think that Ron Paul is somehow too out there. And surely enough, some of the things that he said about Iran and, you know, Iran being justified in getting a nuclear weapon and, you know, a lot of the other things that Ron Paul has said would seem to put him out of the mainstream of American politics. But we're in such a weird point in the Republican Party's history, a <clears throat> kind of collective nervous breakdown here where they're, they're kind of at the end of an era. They don't know quite what's next. The Reagan era is over. George Bush and the Bush father and son kind of followed on Ronald Reagan. Now the Republican Party is split in a million ways. They don't know where to go. Ron Paul represents a consistent, if minority, part of the Republican Party, which is the strict libertarian view. Anti-government, anti-defense spending, no foreign aid, no foreign entanglements, no Federal Reserve, you, you name it. And for 15 to 20 percent of the hardcore Republican electorate, that's where they're at. It just seems like the numbers outside of Iowa and New Hampshire have been consistent for him and, and, and not showing any surges. I'm going to show you both something. Mitt Romney used the reliable criticism against Gingrich again. It was on Sunday. Let's listen. Republicans came together and proposed a program to make sure that Medicare is sustainable. Uh, Paul Ryan uh, was the author of the plan, but almost right. every single Republican in Congress voted for it. And, and the world watched to see, okay, are we going to have progress? And the speaker said, this is right-wing social engineering. I mean, the, 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 talk about unreliable. David Yepsen, is it that voters in your state of Iowa are rallying to Mitt Romney or that they're abandoning Newt Gingrich? Which is it? I think it's 
I think they're abandoning Newt Gingrich. Um, I think they, I think they, you know, a lot of Republicans, they like the way uh, Newt Gingrich bashes the Democrats. He's articulate. Uh, you know, it's kind of red meat. But it, when you start thinking about making him your party's nominee, there's a little buyer's remorse uh, that sets in here. Well, that, that pattern has, has, has happened several times already in, in this race. And, and Romney's quite content to, uh, to keep fueling it because uh, it, it, he, he'll be the last person standing. Win, could win or do well with a, a plurality. And I think Howard's right. I mean, the, the, the Ron Paul Paul factor is very real. Uh, he certainly could win. You can't look at those poll, that polling and, and say he, 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 he's, he's out of the picture. Uh, he's doing what a lot of candidates have traditionally done, try to do well in Iowa and use that media attention uh, to break out of the pack uh, and, and try to, to generate some support he, later down yeah. the race. He's got he a lot it. of young people who are showing up at his events, and that's a wild card. We, don't, we haven't seen a lot of those people. Howard, before. real quick, final comment. Go ahead. I'm just going to say, I, I doubt that Ron Paul could win. It'd be a little bit like Pat Buchanan. I mean, Pat, Pat Robertson winning the Republican caucuses. But I'll say this also. Newt Gingrich has done Mitt Romney a favor because Newt has made Mitt come out of his shell, start doing interviews, start being more user friendly. The, the thing that's made look Mitt Romney look halfway decent or at least acceptable is the presence, the uh, gigantic presence of Newt Gingrich. Uh, amazing, by the way, that it took Newt to bring him out of that shell. Exactly. Thank exactly. you both, Howard Feynman <laughs> and David Yepsen. Appreciate your being here.